coming up on Lakes TV. I'm Jeremy Hall, uh, the owner of Peter Hall & Son, a furniture making company that was started by my father Peter Hall in 1972. He worked on a very small way then, on his own, but we now employ 18 people doing a variety of skills here. Uh, this includes bespoke cabinet making, antique furniture restoration, upholstery, interior design and wood turned gifts that we make on the premises for sale in our showroom. My father started Peter Hall really to try and create beautifully made, beautifully designed pieces of furniture. Although then it was very traditional, we now are more contemporary in our designs, but still following the arts and crafts ethos really, and integrity, where we make furniture using a lot of traditional handwork techniques. We don't let machines dictate the design in any way at all. This is to give a, an exact fit where you can't get that quite so fine finish on by machine, we, we believe. Um, and there's this wonderful integrity of doing it by hand that we really uphold and believe in. The skill that the staff have developed is quite enormous and the attention to detail, the finish, is why people come back for more. I joined my father's business in 1979, having done a seven year training, originally in cabinet making, but then developing it into furniture restoration and conservation. The designs are a bit of a collaborate thing. It's mainly me, but my son, who's done a product design degree in Edinburgh, and he's going to join me in the summer to develop these designs further. And a more contemporary feel, but still upholding our heritage in, our, in this business. The designs we do, the iconic designs that I've designed are, is the Oxford table, which is a glass top table, but it doesn't have a leg at each corner. It has a crossed members, which leaves a very spacious feel. It's very contemporary. It sits wonderfully on um, rugs where you could see through, and it, it doesn't mark because of the glass. It's, it's very practical. Other designs is the Natlan chair, the uh, Ragley chair, and the Pembroke table. And the, the Ragley chair is one, this is a model of what we, we were doing and this was a, a chair that was designed to be very, very clean looking but very, very comfortable. So it's got an ergonomic back here, but it's also curved in plan, which makes it very difficult to fit. All these joints here are cut by hand um, to fit because there's nothing straight. They have to follow the rail, rail round, really. Um, it's a very clean looking chair, uncluttered but extremely comfortable. Um, as with the, the Pembroke table, the names of them really are from where the clients are who have commissioned the pieces, so we just take a nearest town or an area where they come from. The woods we use are mainly in two categories really, homegrown timbers like oak, elm, ash, maple, sycamore, uh, cherry, some cherries and some walnuts that we season up in our sheds in the yard. We also convert them from logs uh, to maintain quality throughout the piece. We also import some timbers, buy them from timber merchants, but they're from reforested sources. We are very selective on how we choose our timbers and that's just the start when you make a piece of furniture. People can come here and either buy a piece of wallpaper, tin of paint, or to have a whole house done using our designs, our furniture, our restoration skills, upholstery skills, as well as curtain making. Um, so it's a whole package that we can offer. The business is situated in Staveley, a village between Kendal and Windermere, and we're just off the A591. If you follow the brown tourist signs, which are marked furniture workshop, visitors are very welcome in the workshop. They can come and browse in this beautiful showroom and watch people working through a gallery. We started off here in this building um, in about 1999, uh, where I'm stood now was a cafe until uh, 2001 really, when the foot and mouth epidemic hit and at that point um, we suddenly found that we had no customers in the cafe and we needed to look at something in order to survive. So we started making a few chutneys and relishes and jams to serve in the cafe and also to sell outside and it started off with um, about three or four different products and we 
got that up to about 12 in, in the first few weeks. Um, today now we have about 138 different lines and um, more that uh, we'd like to make, we're just running out of space to do it. So um, it's definitely become more consuming really. About three years ago we moved to um, a beautiful 16th century barn just a mile from Hawkshead and it's a, a lovely idyllic setting right on the edge of Essway Lake and um, in there now we have all our offices, our kitchen production and warehousing so we can do everything all under one roof. Um, but it's still made by hand, it's still made um, using the same traditional methods, just bigger pans than we had before. We use a lot of things like um, blackberries and blackcurrants and, and all sorts of things that are available locally. And a lot of the products that we make feature damsons which grow um, really well here in South Lake. So um, it makes sense to use those things that are readily available on the doorstep. But we also make things like mango chutney, which obviously, you know, mangoes don't grow too well here. But, but we'll source them and buy them locally, so it just helps to keep the economy thriving locally. And um, that's very important to us. Hawkshead is a lovely little thriving community. And it, it, it is a lovely place in which to live and work. Well, Mark and I set, set it up together. And um, he's, he heads up all the production and um, all the ordering and comes up with all the ideas. And if, we could, if somebody else comes up with an idea, then he puts it into practice and creates the recipe. I deal with all the sales, marketing and finance and um, it works because I stay out the kitchen and he stays out the office. Um, but in amongst that we've got um, a couple that work for us in the kitchens and they work together. Uh, we've got another couple that work in the shop, again married couple that work together and it's people partly that we've known most of our lives and we all work really well together because we all have the similar feeling for what we're doing and we all um, are very enthusiastic about creating something really special. Well, I'm John Blake, I'm uh, retired chairman of uh, the Range Rover Sands Historic Vehicle Society. The event attracts an entry of approximately 230 vehicles each year, and they come from all over the north of England. Today, we've been very fortunate again with the weather. We usually do have good weather, touch wood, and this morning's grey overcast uh, was a little worrying, but the sun's now coming through, and that in itself attracts uh, quite a lot of people who come through the gate to see these wonderful cars. It's it's going very well. Well Frank Brooks was the town clerk of Grange and he, um, he came across some photographs. Apparently an American rally which passed through Grange early in the 20th century. No one's been able to find anything much about it apart from these photographs. But Frank who was very keen to promote Grange thought well this could be a wonderful attraction if we have this vintage car day. So he teamed up originally with Craven Old Wheels and started the first year a rally which came over from Skipton to Grange and displayed here on the field. Since then the event over the last 15 years has grown and as you can see there are many, many vehicles here, all of them historic, classic, cars that your father used to dream of. This year is just very good indeed. It's marvellous, there are people walking around, faces you see every year, but only every year, and um, everyone seems to be going pretty well. There's an awful lot of entries, in fact we have to curtail the number of vehicles, there's just not room on the field. But the paying public um, supporting us and the charities wonderfully. Yeah, I'm Jonathan Brook, I'm uh, director of a charity uh, called Manor House and we're based in Kendall, we've been going for about eight years and uh, we work with homeless and vulnerably housed adults. We, um, the charity chosen to receive the proceeds from today's event so it's fantastic for us. Um, we desperately uh, need resources, funding, money is, is one of those things but also the publicity that comes with that so it's been a really good uh, day for us today.
there are some amazing cars out there. So one I noticed uh, there was a Dodge, um, a big red uh, American uh, vehicle, and that that's certainly eye-catching. So uh, yeah, I mean, I would I wouldn't mind a, a ride in one of those. Uh, this is a 1958 Dodge Royal Lancer, uh, brought into uh, England in 1999 um, and completely renovated uh, in, uh, in 1999-2000 at uh, great expense. I bought it uh, three years ago and uh, uh, poured a little bit more money into it. And so the, all the owners that have uh, been with the car have poured a great deal of money into it. So it uh, stands at a vast amount. Yeah, this is a dream come true for me because I've been wanting this car since I was 15. We had a uh, doctor from America touring and he stayed at our bed and breakfast place and took me for a ride out in a Dodge Custom Royal, 1958, red and white, 15 years ahead of its time. We were all riding around in Ford Populars, if you could afford one, and I always wanted one after that and I've now retired and now's the time. If we don't buy it now, we're not going to have it. So we lashed out and bought it.